Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Oh, oh. Guided bomb units, or GBUs, are the instruments that turned brute force into precision. They pair a conventional bomb body with a guidance kit, so pilots can place effects on target with surgical accuracy and reduce unintended damage. Some use satellite navigation and inertial guidance to find coordinates in any weather. Others use laser seekers to home in on a laser-designated point. The U.S. Air Force has a team of munitions airmen who yep. build and prepare GBU bombs for fighter jets to carry out airstrikes. Wait a minute. These ordnance handlers are well-trained in manufacturing and assembling different types of bombs. To learn how to make original bombs, the airmen are tasked with building inert GBU-12s Inert bombs usually contain inert materials such as concrete rather than explosives. One of the simplest bombs to load and drop onto a target is the GBU-38, particularly due to its minimal launch weight of 559 pounds and a small length of 7 feet and 8.6 inches. On the 18th of March, 2024, airmen assigned to the 389th Fighter Generation Squadron loaded inert GBU-38s on an F-15 E-Strike Eagle during the Red Flag Nellis exercise. From the assembly process to its release, hundreds of airmen work together to make the mission successful. On the 28th of April, 2022, an F-15 Strike Eagle released one modified GBU-31 Joint Direct Attack Munition as part of the Quick Sync exercise. This missile successfully destroyed a full-scale surface vessel in the Gulf of Mexico. You see, torpedoes such as MK-48 are still the primary method used to sink enemy ships. However, whenever a Navy submarine launches a torpedo, it gives away its own location and becomes a target. Through QuickSync, the AFRL wanted to develop a low-cost method of achieving torpedo-like seaworthy kills from the air at a much higher pace and over a much larger area than a submarine. According to the footage obtained, the GBU-31 launched by the F-15 destroyed the entire keel of the ship, causing it to sink immediately. A guided bomb unit, GBU, also known as a smart bomb, is a precision-guided munition that carries a guidance system monitored and controlled by an external device. Since the creation of precision-guided munitions, the older bombs were renamed as unguided bombs, or dumb bombs, as they could not alter their direction after being released from the aircraft. A guided bomb usually carries fewer explosives to accommodate the guidance mechanisms. It is released from an aircraft like a traditional bomb, but is guided by a remote control after launch. The pilot releases the weapon and searches for the target. Once the target is acquired, the weapon can be locked to the target or manually guided via the data link system. Dropping a guided bomb from a fighter jet is one thing, but releasing it from a bomber is what sends chills down the spine. B-52 
B-1B Lancer carries the largest conventional payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the Air Force inventory and is considered the backbone of America's long-range bomber force. To load the bomb onto the B-1B, the GBU-31 is first put on a trailer and placed right under the opening of the bomb bay. The load crews, while standing on a folding ladder, physically mount the GBU-31 on the hard points inside the bomb bay. Once the bombs are loaded, the bomber takes off to carry out bombing runs. It was not common to use bombers to destroy battleships at sea. Early aviation visionaries, such as General Billy Mitchell, foresaw its possibilities. In a milestone test of the new concept of heavy bombing, Mitchell demonstrated the ability of contemporary bombers. Mitchell's Martin bombers sank several ships, such as the Ostfriesland. After an attack by aircraft carrying 1,000 pounds bombs, his airmen dropped six 2,000 pound bombs on the battleship and in 20 minutes, the Ostfriesland was sent to the bottom of the sea. Despite the success, critics of air power remained unconvinced that bombers could destroy a naval fleet, a fact that was negated in the years to follow. This demonstration, however, became the base of the development of bombers in the years to come. In addition to dropping bombs from the air, the U.S. military also stores and launches missiles from underground facilities known as missile silos. A missile silo is an underground vertical structure that is covered by a 110-ton blast door on the surface. This door is merely a big concrete slab from the outside, and it is nearly impossible to see what's behind the blast door. The U.S. operates almost 450 ready-to-fire intercontinental ballistic missiles from these vertical structures. Buried deep underground, these silos are fortified structures designed to withstand nuclear blasts, endure natural disasters, and resist sophisticated sabotage attempts. The launch crew begins the pre-launch check to ensure everything is in working order. The personnel enter the missile silo through the blast door using an elevator and examine the external body of the ICBM. Within the silo, a passage opens to the launcher equipment room, where the launch crew inspects the missile's guidance system, propulsion, and safety mechanism. When each system is verified, the launch crew proceeds with the launch, which begins with a countdown. During the countdown phase, everyone is evacuated from the silo for safety reasons.
At last, the ICBM launches from the silo towards the target, and the launch crew keeps on looking at the missile's trajectory until it hits the target. Each missile silo features a control center. However, in the case of ICBMs, like the Minuteman 3, the launch crew is not located at each silo separately. Two launch officers are stationed at an underground launch control center, which is connected via hardened cables to almost 10 other silos. The pack of these silos is known as a flight. Each silo is located almost 10 to 20 miles away from the other to protect the flight against a hostile attack. What's more unique is that all the launch control centers of a flight are part of a missile alert facility where launch crews stay active 24-7 and maintain communication with the President and Secretary of Defense. The intercontinental ballistic missiles can also be launched from submarines operating deep in the ocean. Sea-based ICBMs are an essential part of the United States' nuclear triad and play a crucial role in nuclear deterrence. The U.S. has several sea-based ICBMs in its arsenal, such as the technologically advanced Trident II, which is equipped with multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicles, MIRVs. MIRVs allow the Trident II ICBM to carry multiple warheads, each capable of striking separate targets. The U.S. Navy's Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs, have several launch tubes capable of carrying and deploying multiple Trident II missiles. These vessels are equipped with unique, sealed canisters that house the ICBMs to protect them from the harsh marine environment. The crew initiates the launch sequence to open the launch tube's door located at the submarine's hull. The missile's solid rocket motor ignites and then propels the missile out of the launch tube. After hitting the ocean's surface and launching into the air, the missile's rocket motor continues to propel it forward. The missile attains the altitude and position required to follow the pre-programmed flight trajectory toward its target. The most feared missile in the entire submarine arsenal is the 1,500 pounds UGM-84 Harpoon missile that features a warhead capable of sinking even the largest naval vessels. It is encapsulated in a specially designed container so it can be launched from underwater with the help of the submarine's torpedo tubes. The crew uses several machines to handle and load the UGM-84 harpoon, and once it is loaded, the missile is ready for launch. During the SYNCHEX exercise, torpedoes are launched on old, damaged, or derelict vessels to get a real sense of how their weapons would work in actual combat. The torpedoes cause devastating strikes, often causing ships to begin sinking after a single direct hit. From the early dreams of visionaries like Billy Mitchell to today's advanced guided bomb units and intercontinental missiles, the story of aerial and strategic weapons is one of relentless innovation.
They remain both a shield of deterrence and a sword of precision, shaping not only the battlefield, but also the very nature of global security. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.